associate member and as the elected member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Not a point of you don't have to like me personally, but you are dead wrong on the rules. And I invite the clerk to weigh in. Uh, the, 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 so I think this is about 5.5 hours now of a Conservatives filibuster. Let's sort of review what's going on here for Canadians at home. So, we, yeah, I'm sure they're all watching. Um, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, we tried to have an agenda subcommittee meeting to work out an agenda for the rest of May and June until the House rises for the summer. Obviously, we had a good debate in that meeting. I won't discuss uh, anything in the meeting, but certainly the outcome of it was pretty apparent to the committee that we could not achieve consensus around that uh, set of priorities, even though we had a fulsome discussion. Conservatives were the ones that would not uh, support any form of programming motion uh, where we agreed on a set of priorities. Even though I will say quite openly and honestly that uh, we really tried to achieve consensus, uh, we just found that the Conservatives, of course, uh, as we see here today, were not really interested in working collaboratively. Of course, they said that they opposed our budget before it was even released. Uh, so really, do they really want to study the budget? I would argue that what we're seeing here today point, is, point of order, is chair, no, the uh, exact opposite. Point of order. Point of order. Okay, thanks for giving me a break. Yeah. Appreciate that. The, is he, <laughs> you need a break already. Is he, is he sitting as a member right now? No, you have not. So I, I can so, still raise a point no. of order, Chair, even so if I'm not subbed you, in. You are not, you have not been I'm an associate subbed. member, and I have, have a point of order. Have you been subbed in, MP Genius? Pardon me? Have you been subbed in? I, I don't know, but I have a point so of order, and I'm an associate member. We'll I claim continue. I claim my rights MP as an Turnbull. associate member of this committee, Mr. Chair. MP Turnbull, continue, please. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Chair, am I an associate member? Could you check your records? Maybe the clerk can clarify. Well, thank you, Chair. My first point of order is that I would have had a right to raise a point of order regardless of whether or not I was substituted in. Um, my second point, though, is that uh, to Mr. Turnbull's uh, point, he is, he is misleading the committee. Uh, actually, uh, our Conservative leader put forward three specific demands in relation to the budget. Uh, they were to axe the carbon tax, uh, remove the gatekeepers. We're suspended. One second. Oh. Okay. Then you are not subbed in to the committee. I'll return back to uh, sorry. Point, point, point of order, chair. I don't yes, need sure. to be subbed in. Maybe so the I, clerk can clarify, I but I, I don't need floor. to be subbed Do in to raise a point of order. Floor. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so as point I was of order, saying, chair, we tried I don't, to achieve consensus point of order, with Mr. the chair? conservatives. Point of order, Mr. Chair. They point of order, MP Chambers. Point of order, MP Chambers. I'm just. Are you making a ruling that Mr. Genius does not have the ability to make a point of order? Is that, no, no, is that a ruling you're making? No, no. What I'm saying, MP Chambers, is that MP Turnbull has the floor. MP Genius has not been subbed in as of yet. So that, is that a ruling that you're making? That he's, Can you confirm with the clerk if that's a question of privilege? Is that a question of privilege? Okay. Suspend it again. Order. So that is that is that is not that is not no that is that that you cannot just MP Genius so MP Turnbull you've got the floor. What? Point of order, uh, Chair. I didn't just walk through the door. I was elected I by the constituents the of Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, to represent them in this Continue House of Commons. Turnbull, I was yeah. named an associate member of this order. committee, you, which means I have a right to raise points of order. MP Turnbull, order. you've got the floor. This is another yeah. example, Chair. But I have a point of order. Are you going to let me speak, or is this going to become a matter of privilege? Okay. I do have I do have a member on a point of order, MP Samari. MP Samari. Mr. Chair, as you know, as all MPs know, when there's cross-talking and people are talking at the same time, it makes work impossible for interpreters. So please, some decorum. Talk, you know, and I, and I don't have to tell MP Genius. I've told him many times before about the cross-talk, and he continues to do it. But It's yes, a point it, of but, order, Chair. So we are going back to MP Turnbull. I have a ask, point of order, Chair. Point of order. The MP is still in the room. There's been no substitute. So MP it, Turnbull. Please. It doesn't matter if I'm substituted. Please I have stop a point the cross of order. Talk, MP Genius. Then enforce the rules, Chair. Okay, MP Turnbull. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Appreciate uh, the ability to speak in committee. I feel like my uh, my privileges are being infringed upon by being interrupted so frequently by Mr. Genius, but uh, that's okay. Um, 
I, uh, Chair, I'd like I to raise a question of privilege, Mr. Hall, outside the room. So even according to your own bizarro interpretation of the rules, uh, I MP, should have the right point to raise of order. MP, MP Genius, first, I, I'd ask for uh, respect and decorum here at this committee. And yeah, I'd ask stop the same with the crosstalk, please, because that's what you often do here at committee. I don't know if you do it at all committee. I have a question of privilege to raise, Chair. Point and of order. So, yes, MP Hallin has left. You are at the table. I've got a point of order from MP Angus. So I have a question of privilege to raise. Are you going to recognize thank me, you. Chair? Thank you. A point of order, yeah. Go ahead, MP Angus. Thank you, Chair. Um, we've seen this tactic from Mr. Jenis where he comes in and he's abusive. Um, he's talking over other people. So I'm, I want to hear what the points are. I don't need to be bullied by Mr. Jenis. Uh, this is a common tactic. So I'm just, I, I respect your role as chair, but I really do think uh, if he's not willing to to listen, um, then we need to talk about uh, at least cutting off the mic so that the chair, because when the chair speaks, no one else is supposed to interrupt. And Mr. Janice just talks over people. And he's here, I think, just to to play that game. But it's it's very disrespectful. And it's also, as my Black Quebec colleague said, it's we've had ma multiple concerns about uh, problems for our translators the harassment that they have to endure hearing this as people are shouting over it. So uh, out of respect for our translators as well, I'm just asking if you can keep um, the, the meeting focused and you're, you're doing a good job on it, but we need, we need some respect for the, for the process here. Thank you, MP Angus. Yeah, so, you know, my, my number one priority here is uh, actually the you know, members may be thinking something else, but it's the health and safety of those that work here. And uh, the health and safety of our interpreters, I read it into the record at every meeting. And uh, I hope that I'm sure Mr. Genius has been to many meetings, has heard me read it into the record, understands how uh, some of, you know, the, 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 the screaming, the, the crosstalk, the et cetera, is, is really hurting and affecting our interpreters, but affecting all, all members of the committee. So uh, that's what I will stick to. Again, my priority and what is paramount is the health and safety of those that, uh, that are here at the table, but those that work here and uh, in this room to make our, our jobs possible. So on, uh, on that, I'll go back to... Chair, I have a question MP of privilege I'd like okay. to raise. MP Genius. Thank, uh, thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm raising a question of privilege in relation to, uh, this is, uh, I'll start by reading the relevant citations. This is from Chapter uh, 20 of House and Commons uh, Procedure and Practice uh, regarding the status of members and the rights of members to speak at committee. Uh, it says standing and uh, standing joint committees also have associate members. Associate members may be named subcommittees and may act as substitutes for regular committee members who are unable to attend a committee meeting. When members serve on subcommittees or as substitutes for regular members. They enjoy all the rights of regular members. They are counted for purposes of a quorum. They may participate in debate. They may move motions and vote. And if required, they may submit a notice of motion. The use of associate members on subcommittees helps to reduce the workload of regular members. It continues, the standing orders provide that any member, whether affiliated with a political party or sitting as an independent, may take part in the public proceedings of any committee of which he or she is not a member unless the House or the committee in question orders otherwise. The standing orders specifically exclude a non-member from voting, moving motions, or being counted for purposes of quorum. Committees often adopt a routine motion that governs the process and time allocation for committee members to question witnesses, and it continues. Uh, but the, the important point is that the standing orders uh, and procedure and practice very clearly establish uh, that associate members of committees uh, duly elected by their constituents have a right to come to participate in committees uh, to participate in all aspects of those committees uh, within certain constraints, uh, namely that they cannot vote, move more motions, or be counted for the purposes of quorum. Now, I was raising a point of order not seeking to uh, vote, move a motion, or be counted for the purposes of quorum, but in fact to raise a point of order. Uh, and what followed was a denial of my right to speak, uh, followed by various outrageous slanders from uh, from other members, uh, impugning my approach to committee and my uh, and my motivations. Uh, the fact of the matter is, though, I will 
assert the vital importance of adherence to the rules of the committee. And the rules uh, are not invented by the chair, with all due respect. The chair is responsible for enforcing the rules as uh, enumerated in House of Commons procedure and practice and in the standing orders. Uh, The standing orders provide that I have a right to raise points of order and I have a right to speak. Uh, And uh, I I was seeking to raise a point of order uh, and and crosstalk only emerged, chair, when I was uh, prevented from from exercising my rights as a member of the committee. I do want to note with respect to the health of, of uh, interpreters that this question uh, of, of crosstalk and the impact on the health of interpreters was dealt with extensively at the Natural Resources Committee, where the Liberal chair there, George Chahal, initially claimed that health uh, and safety of interpreters was threatened by crosstalk. He subsequently had to retract that and admit that he had been wrong. Uh, of course, crosstalk makes it more difficult for interpreters to interpret. That's true. It's harder for them to translate when there are multiple people talking at once, but it is not a threat to their health and safety. Health and safety issues of interpreters are engaged uh, in other cases, for instance, when the uh, when there is a, a loop created uh, with the with the sound device. But this is uh, um, this is this is well known, Chair. So I would I would caution people like Mr. Angus from um, kind of making things up and saying that something's a problem for health and safety when it's not. But the issue I, I, I am principally raising in relation to the matter of privilege, Chair, is that is that I have a right to, to speak at committee. Uh, that is clearly established in the standing order. Uh, or I was uh, denied that right uh, by you a few mo- moments ago. Uh, this uh, this, this uh, does engage my privileges very clearly. Uh, the most foundational privilege that members of parliament have is the ability to speak in committees. Uh, and the denial of that privilege does constitute an issue uh, touching on, on privilege. Uh, in, in that light, I'm prepared to move a, a motion of privilege uh, that the chair uh, be be instructed to prepare a report outlining the material facts of this uh, breach of privilege and present that report uh, to the committee. Uh, so, uh, so chair, um, I will I will speak on that um, on that matter now. Uh, I think uh, just just briefly, when a member is uh, denied the right to speak, uh, that that is a. A gravely serious issue uh, that all of us are elected. You know, where, whether we're regular members of a committee or not. However, we we come into the room, uh, we we have rights to speak and be heard on behalf of our constituents. Uh, the the established rules and protocols around uh, privileges of members, the ability of members to speak. Uh, these are not things that are. Um, that are are deniable by an individual chair, by uh, by somebody, by, by a committee acting um, uh, acting without uh, without the clear adoption of a motion, because of the because of the the long standing principles around um, around these these issues. Uh, I know I know some of my other colleagues may want to come in on this issue of of uh, of, uh, of privilege, um, but but chair, just just to say that that speakers' rulings going back a very long time, have established uh, established rules around the right of, of speakers. And uh, the the way to have a committee uh, unfold in a, in a productive, effective, uh, respectful manner is to have rules adhered to. Uh, and uh, I think a, a chair cannot and should not demand adherence to their will apart from their own willingness to adhere to those rules. Uh, so this is why this motion of privilege asking for the preparation of uh, a report to the House uh, will allow the committee to um, um, to reestablish a footing of saying that yes, all members have a right to speak. Uh, all, all members uh, are are duly elected, uh, whether they are made members, uh, regular members of not, whether they are they are subbed in or not. Uh, and and the the key point is that the right to speak as a member in the House or the committee does not emanate from uh, the leadership of one's party. Uh, of course, we understand the systems that exist for um, maybe the establishment of lists that go to a speaker uh, or for the establishment of memberships of the committee, uh, that the, the chair, uh, that, 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 that the that various lists are submitted uh, from party whips that establish members of the committee. Uh, but the, the effect of that should not be to prevent members from exercising their privileges. Because although uh, party uh, party whips establish who the regular members of committees are, uh, that those who are not assigned to be regular members of the committee but may have an interest in the subject matter of the committee, nonetheless 
need to have their right to speak as part of the proceedings of the committee uh, uh, protected. Uh, in fact, the, the House has taken additional steps uh, in, in some cases to allow the clause-by-clause -clause stage on a bill, even to allow amendments to be moved uh, by people that are, are not uh, regular members or not members of, of recognized parties. Uh, people may leave their party caucus for various reasons, or they may be elected as independents. Uh, their rights to speak in committee or in the House must still be protected. If we were ever to to um, move away from that principle that sees rights uh, of, of participation committees stemming from the status of a person as a member of parliament and start to instead view that as emanating from uh, their their status as, as uh, being chosen by party leadership, uh, then that that would uh, that that would reduce members to uh, merely creations of their their parties and and their their party leadership, as opposed to representatives of their constituents. Uh, we come in here not principally as representatives of parties or members of parties, uh, but rather as uh, as people who have been selected by our constituents uh, to represent their concerns. And although I'm a regular member of the Government Operations Committee, uh, my constituents uh, may and often do have concerns that relate to the subject matter of other committees. Uh, and so uh, in the process of, of not merely exercising my rights as an individual member of parliament, uh, but wanting to represent my constituents, uh, that, that brings me to then uh, want to be able to voice the concerns, the ideas, the priorities of constituents by participating in the conversations that are happening in uh, various other committees. Uh, and this is why um, not only is the principle is established in the rules that members can uh, participate in, in the discussions, deliberations that are happening in other committees, uh, but it is an important principle that they be able to uh, ha have that right to participate in the deliberations of other committees uh, uh, protected. If they did not, then it would it would it would undermine the um, the, the core principle of representation uh, about who we are actually here uh, supposed to serve. And this is this is at the heart of the principle of of privilege. What what is privilege? What is the privilege of members uh, protect? It's, it's not about the assertion of the entitlement of a member to want to do something or not do something, uh, but it is about the, uh, the obligation of members to, to act on behalf of their constituents and therefore having the ability to carry out their function as a representative of their, uh, of their constituents. So uh, this is, um, this is a, I think, a clear-cut uh, matter, Chair, and I am, um, I'm hopeful that maybe uh, if, if, we, uh, if we do see the, uh, the rapid adoption of this, of this matter of, uh, of privilege, uh, that we will be able to, um, to quickly return to the, uh, the main subject matter uh, before us, and I'll, uh, I'll leave my comments there. I think maybe Mr. Lawrence had a comment on the question of privilege as well. Thank you, MP Genius. First, are, are you done? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm so, MP Genius, as I, you know, I never know how to pronounce his name. So, like, uh, uh, can you tell us how to pr how best to pronounce your name? Uh, uh, well, generally in this business, it's worth it's worth lowering expectations, not raising them. So, uh, so on that basis, uh, you can go with Genis or the traditional Maltese Genuis. So Genis, sure. Here. Okay. So, MP MP Genis. First off, let me just reiterate to uh, to yourself and all members. And to those that are here and those watching is uh, the paramount priority for me as chair is the health and safety of everybody in this room. And yes, the crosstalk and the screaming and the banging that uh, Ms. MP Jenis uh, has demonstrated not just here today, but many times at, at this committee has affected, has affected our interpreters. Please, please, uh, MP Genis, you, we can go look through the video of MP Genis screaming into the mic here and at this committee, uh, crosstalk, etc. And to and to say that, that to say that those uh, to say MP Genis and to say that those antics do not hurt our interpreters and do not cause injury and, and to to their health and to their safety, I think is completely wrong. But Point if you order. if you believe if you the believe MP Genius, if you believe MP Genius, you have to recognize me. Okay. MP Lawrence on uh, on a point of order. Yeah, I I, I have a right to okay. speak there, guys. I know you wouldn't like. But me I will. But I will give. I, I will give my role. Yeah. Like, let me 
Yeah. Okay. Is he allowed to speak here? Uh, I, I, I don't think it's necessary for you to invoke a personal attack, Mr. Chair, on Mr. Jenis. If you want to go through the facts, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But the, the personal attacks, I realize it's late and... I'm sticking to the... So I, this is not personal. This is not personal. I am sticking to the facts, okay? And I'm sticking to the point that MP Jenis said that it does not create a health and safety issue when he crosstalks or when he screams or when he does different things, different antics here at this community. But I believe that, it, the, be it MP Jenis or other members, it does, it does right, affect... Point, point, point of order, Chair. Please don't, point don't of order. crosstalk on, on, on point the point of order. of order. And I will give you my ruling, but on a point of order, yes, MP Jenis. Yeah. Uh, Chair, you are... Uh, misstating what I said. I, I'm not defending any of the practices that you allege I falsely that I did. Um, but sure, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking, and other members are engaging in crosstalk. So if okay, if no, it's no, it's either yeah, for or it isn't. Your mic your microphone was on, sir. Okay. Um, but but this this was dealt with. The, 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 my my point was narrowly on the issue of the relevance of crosstalk to health and safety. Uh, Ms. Mr. Bruzen and uh, Ms. Zarowitz, I'm sorry, and Mr. Turnbull, uh, I, I apologize. Uh, Ms. Zarowitz and Mr. Turnbull are engaging in crosstalk now. Okay, okay, uh, MP Jenis, okay. let here, here, me here's allow the point. you to speak about your, your crosstalk. Well, I, I, I think you're just sort of making things up about me, Chair, and I, I, I understand not, that you have you, a reason MP to Genis. want to do that. It's, a, it's, it's about crosstalk, but, but and it's I about would just encourage you, because I, I, I'm doing a point of order now, and you're talking over me, so I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm perplexed by the idea that you're saying that if I'm speaking and you start talking at the same time, that I'm somehow responsible for that crosstalk. I would think that if I'm raising a point of order and you start speaking at the same time, that you have at least a greater share of responsibility for the outcome of crosstalk than I do when that's happening. But this issue was dealt with at the Natural Resources Committee, and I would encourage you to speak to Mr. Chahal, who I think had a little bit of egg on his face after some of the claims he made. Uh, um, even if he didn't sort of acknowledge it, uh, it's clearly in the record where he where he has to, has to come back to the committee and clarify that that while crosstalk makes it more difficult to interpret, uh, it does not lead to health negative health and safety outcomes. There are other things that do, but specifically the issue of crosstalk. Now, I still think crosstalk should be avoided, but 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 I I I further don't understand how the fact that if if I'm trying to speak, if I'm trying to to raise a point of order as I was, and you are repeatedly denying my right to speak, somehow somehow you would like to believe that I'm in the wrong for asserting a principle of the privilege of members. And that's why I raised the question of privilege. Because, well, because look, the priority should be adherence to the rules. The rules protect all of us. They protect you as chair. They protect me as an individual member. They protect the regular members. All you have to do as chair to succeed in your role is enforce the rules that are established. That's all you have to do. Enforce the rules. Don't make up new rules. Enforce the rules that are established. Okay. And I, I know you're so coming I'll, in at the same time, ruling, which is Empigenis. creating crosstalk, Empigenis. but I would just encourage you, yep. enforce the rules as they're established. Now I'm done, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you're going to enforce the rules that are written. Not make up, you Empi know, Peter Empi Fonseca's rules, but point enforce the rules that are in House of Commons procedure and practice. Point of order, uh, MP Green. I, I would like to request that on every point of order, you ask that the standing order actually be referenced, because none of that, none of that, was a point of order. And you have to chair the meeting. Thank you. So please uh, do that. Thank you, MP Green and MP Jenis. Uh, just before I go to uh, to my uh, ruling, is uh, what I will say is again is is again around the, the health and safety because uh, I, I I will I will not stop reiterating this for our interpreters. I have heard how it affects them, and how many of them have been hurt. And we want to stop that from happening. So on that, I'll just say I disagree with what MP Jenis had to say here on that. Now, on my ruling, and this is from, of course, House of Commons, Procedure and Practice, on page uh, point, point of order. 1036, I'm giving my ruling, I'm a point substitutes of order, for members who are officers of the committee, for example, its chair or vice chair, do not, however, assume the prerogatives or responsibilities related to these positions. At meetings, the very principle of substitution means that it may occur only when the substituted member is absent from the meeting. So, and uh, as we know, and we all saw, uh, MP Halan was still here in the room as uh, MP Jenis uh, 
came through. I don't even know if he was sitting at the table and then started uh, going on at the mic about, about whatever he was going on about. So that is my ruling, members. Again, uh, MP Genis, if you want to look at uh, the House of Commons, if you want to, if that's my ruling. Sure, p p point of order. Yeah, um, do you want to challenge my ruling? Or is, uh, sure, is that, is you, that... did, you, did, you didn't rule on a question of privilege. I think you ruled on a, on a question of order. You didn't rule on a question of privilege. Um, but but I, maybe to provide further clarity ahead of your, your ruling on the order. question of privilege, uh, I at no point asserted that I was substituting. No, oh, MP Genis, no, it's, that it's not I, debate. Given, it's a question of privilege. I have given my ruling. Mr. Genis, Green, are you engaging in crosstalk here? I have given uh, my ruling, members. I have given my yeah, ruling. And I'm, that is it. We are you, going. You, I just on a point of order, ruling. Chair. You, 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 you didn't reference the question of privilege at all. I have given my ruling, MP Genis. Point, point of order, Chair. Point of order. You didn't reference the question of privilege at all. Yeah. And, and Mr. Green is engaging in crosstalk. I don't know if you have anything to say to him about that or not, but, uh, well, it's, it's still, he's still talking, though. So, uh, MP Genis, I've given, I've given my ruling. <laughs> We're going back to... I, I won't argue with that, Mr. Green, but uh, point of order. that's, that's not point maybe of order. germane I, to, the, uh, to the topic. On, on before your ruling... Um, before the ruling, I asked to speak on the, on the point of privilege, which I, I'm guessing that you are. Were we in discussion of that now, or was that your that's your ruling on order? I have given my ruling on on the privilege issue. I have given my ruling on MP Genis uh, coming to the table and looking to speak with his, but as a substitute and not having MP Hallan out of the room, which I asked. Point, for. point of order, yeah. chair. I was not seeking to speak as a substitute. I was seeking to speak as an associate member and as the elected member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Not a point of order. You don't have to like me personally, but you are dead wrong on the rules. And I invite the clerk to weigh in. The, 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 clerk, the clerk should be invited to weigh in on this. It is, it is, it is an important principle of Parliament. We'll suspend. With, uh, with the clerk, uh, I can I can say that uh, MP Genius, it is not a question of uh, privilege uh, for a member. So there was first, I did not recognize you at, as uh, as uh, a member. You had not been substituted. There was not um, consent from members to hear you speak. You just barged through the doors as. You know, if we had 338 members that just wanted to run through the door and start doing what you did, it would be mayhem in here. It would be chaos. It would not be, we would not have decorum. So to hold decorum, that's, that is my, that is what, what, it, what took place. So once you've been substituted, then you have, you, you are, you are at the table. But there, w there was not there was not consent I could say from uh, from the members here uh, to uh, to hear you and uh, you just kind of started turn on your mic and started going and that is that is not uh, that is not allowed. Point of order, chair. Point of order, uh, chair. Uh, I, I didn't just turn on my mic and start speaking. I said point of order, and uh, the way the way you raise a matter of order have, uh, MP, is you say I, point of I'll, order. I'll, on, on that. And then you're MP, recognized. And MP Genesis, and then you I just said that you did not have consent and you were not substituted. Just point, so, point of order. I don't need consent of other members to raise a point of order. That's, that's, a, that's a dramatically new concept to say that you need the consent of other members of committee to raise a point of order. Consent. You would have to be at the committee. You would have to be recognized by the chair or have implied consent. You did not have it. And you just started speaking. Could, I, turn. could the clerk speak? Because I think your your interpretation of the rules is is yeah. not accurate. Anyway, I, 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 I've, I've given my ruling to uh, to the member and to the members. So uh, on that, we are going to now uh, go point, back point of to order, MP Chair. Turnbull, please. Point of order. Point of order. Is is your ruling that associate members cannot raise points of order? MP Genesis, you were not you were not at the table. Uh, there was no consent to have how, you speak. You came in and barged into this room here on committee. What, but, uh, Chair, what, what does it mean to say I barged in? I, I opened the door and I walked yeah. through it and I sat at the table. I'm, I'm an elected member of parliament Genesis, and I'm an associate debate. member we, we of this are, committee. We are going to go back. It, it, I don't it need your permission it, it, it to do debate. my job as an MP. MP, MP Genesis. And part of my job is, is to be able to sit on committees. So, sure, so, you could sit on committee. You right now, you are subbed in the committee. You are sitting. But even at if the, I'm not subbed in the committee, 
Even if I'm not subbed in. No, you must be right. If you are not subbed in, you know, like I said, you cannot have 338 or 100 uh, senators run through the door here and start and start me, grabbing the mic. Right. Part and and start you you do need to be recognized by the chair and you do need consent from the committee. So point, I'm going to go back order, to Mr. MP chair. Turnbull. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Is he signed in? Okay. Point, point of order, Mr. Turnbull, Chair. You are, you, hey, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I appreciate order, having Mr. the Chair. floor back after that display. I, I of, a point uh, of order, actually. Point, point of order, order for MP Lawrence. Thank you. I um, I had a point of order. It got uh, it got cut off and lost in the in the uh, discussion there. But um, I did before your ruling ask to speak uh, prior to that, and then you just gave the ruling. Um, ruling, yes. Yes, but before then, before then, I asked to speak on it. And you acknowledge me? Yeah, I, I said on the point of privilege, I would like to speak. I don't know whether you heard me. That's that's fair game, uh, but I definitely said it, uh, and you acknowledged it. No, that, the, my my ruling was on the uh, the ability for uh, MP Genius to be uh, to be able to speak and to be at the table. So, will you be ruling on the uh, on the point of uh, point of privilege? I ruled that MP Genius did uh, came through the the door. And did not uh, was not substituted in at at right. the at so that the, was the time. Your ruling on and, 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 and 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 as far as that at committee, it is the chair to recognize somebody at the table, if they so desire, and to have implicit some consent from the members. And that was not there. The consent was not there from the members to have MP Genius speak. So MP Lawrence. So my. Uh my objection, I guess, if you will, our point of order, uh, was the fact that I requested specifically to speak on that ruling prior to the ruling, and you didn't, uh, you didn't give me that opportunity to speak. Okay. Sorry, I, I yeah. didn't hear no that. But, uh, and just so, uh, MP Veerson, you have been substituted, and MP Genius has left the room. So, yeah. Yeah. So, just, Dennis, yeah, I'm, more, I'm, I'm concerned not so much uh, with the formalities of it, but I did ask to get recognized. You acknowledged me, and I didn't get recognized. Uh, and a, a simple admission of that, and perhaps an apology would be would be warranted. MP Lawrence, I, I, I've given my ruling, and uh, like I said, I was speaking on to uh, MP Genius and to uh, his the points that uh, that he brought up. Uh, I, I've read the I've read the ruling on the substitution, so I that everybody that. is well aware. I'm glad that MP Verson now has been uh, substituted the way that should be done. Uh, because I did see that MP Veerson was trying to speak at the table and then and was not recognized by by the chair and did not have consent, I believe, from the the members to be able to do so. But now that he is at the table and substituted in, he would be able to to do that. MP okay, Lawrence. Uh, Mr. Chair, I I uh, I brought this up now three times and you haven't addressed it in one of my three times. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go again. Okay. Well, so I'll just say, uh, MP Lawrence, I have addressed it. I feel that I have addressed it. You may not feel that way. I feel that it has been addressed. I'm, so going, to, we are, I'm going to continue a point okay. of order here. So I just want to have the opportunity to go through the, the confluence of events. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jenis raised a point of privilege. I put up my hand and said, I would like to speak to that point of privilege, uh, which under the rules, I'm not only that's not that's not a choice for yours, you have to do that. Uh, and you, you recognize me clearly gave me some type of gestures. Uh, I assumed that that meant that you were going to allow me to speak prior to you making your ruling. Um, and so the, a simple just acknowledgement of that would be great. So I, I will have to go through the uh, the video and see what was said. What was, uh, and on that, MP Lawrence, what was happening was a lot of uh, crosstalk, a lot of uh, uh, back and forth, uh, mostly from MP Janice that uh, was didn't matter who was speaking, he would uh, he would jump in, uh, which was very uh, disrespectful, I believe, and uh, and did not help with the decorum here at uh, at this committee. So I will I will look into where you may have wanted to come in. Um, you have the opportunity now, as you have been uh, as have had the opportunity to uh, to speak. I hear what you're saying. I did give my uh, my ruling, and uh, and I hope uh, and also again I. I you know, I don't know how, how you feel or how other members feel. I just I say I feel very strongly about the health and safety of people here uh, in this room and uh, those that are doing a, a tremendous job 
to uh, to keep up with the uh, with the interpretation and uh, and you know it, it's unacceptable and I, I won't allow for members like MP Genius to uh, be able to uh, to come in here and start screaming and the antics that only hurt people and the health and safety of our of our of those that work here on the hill. Point of order. And I don't want to. I honestly, I don't want to beleaguer this, but I do believe it's important. One of the things that will help me from not cross talking is that is that a belief that you will acknowledge my point of order or that you will acknowledge uh, my my and I expressed a desire to speak on Mr. Genesis' point of privilege, and you ignored that went right to your ruling, which then encourages me to crosstalk, not because I want to hurt anyone. I certainly don't. Uh, our interpreters do a great work, but I do have uh, 100,000 people in Northumberland, Peterborough South, who are counting on me to raise that voice. Thank you. That uh, point thank of order. You, thank you, MP Lawrence. Uh, point just, of order, MP Turnbull. I, my understanding is that, um, you know, if the conservatives want to challenge your ruling, then they can do that. But otherwise, I think we need to move on with the debate. I had the floor... I was interrupted for, I don't know how long now, but quite a number. I, I also represent 142,000 people that I want to speak on behalf of. And I was interrupted over and over and over and over again. So I'd like to finish my remarks, uh, Chair. And uh, so I'm hoping that I can have the floor back. Yeah. Uh, MP Verson, now is, uh, is MP Genesis uh, still, is that possible? No, MP Verson. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I still don't think that we have clarity on a ruling of privilege um, because the challenge that we have is that while I appreciate that you read from Chapter 20 of the uh, House of Commons Common Practices and Procedures, uh, I'm reading from the 2017 uh, edition, but if you had continued reading, uh, the next paragraph says that the standing orders provides that any member, wh whether affiliated with a political party or sitting as an independent, may take part in the proceedings of a committee that he or she is not a member of unless the House or the committee in question orders otherwise. And so that th there was no, no special order governing the proceedings of this particular meeting uh, so any member can can appear, can sit down at the table and participate in the in the debate. Now, if there is, if it's time, if it's a time debate, and we are moving through the order, uh, mem members of a uh, members of parliament say, I will share my time with a, a particular member. But points of order are able to be made by any member of parliament that comes and sits at this table. They don't need to be subbed in in order to, for that. And that is where the privilege issue has come up. Is that that you failed to recognize Mr. Jenis uh, as a member of parliament allowed to sit here. That I, I hope that we're making the point that you can't just decide who gets recognized at committee um, based on their party affiliation or not. Um, so I, I hope that you can maybe clarify that and make sure that you understand the rules on this and rule appropriately on this privilege motion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, MP Verson. I, I thought I, I was clear, and that is that uh, when uh, a non, uh, uh, non-sitting non member of the committee or someone that has not been substituted in, so someone that walks through the door, a member of parliament or a senator, that to sit at the table and to have the opportunity to be able to speak to the committee and to participate uh, would need consent from the members and would also uh, require consent from the chair. So that was not given. And, uh, and so when we had MP Genius just walk through the door, <clears throat> excuse me, and sit down at the table and then turn on his mic and, uh, and, interrupt members that were that had the floor and were speaking and were debating what we are debating at this time. So that is that is what happened and that is what how I have ruled. I'm not sure I'm not quite sure how to proceed from here because I don't I don't when I read the rules I don't read any of that in the rules. The rules are that members of parliament may participate at committee. They may not vote, and they may not be counted in quorum, and they may not move motions. But every member of parliament has the opportunity to participate at committee. There's no requirement for unanimous consent for you to participate in a public hearing. 
There's no, no require like the ability to move a point of order is every member of parliament's ability, regardless by, by virtue of them being a member of parliament. The, it is all of our, it's our collective responsibility to make sure that this place works. It's our collect, so every, any member of parliament may raise a point of order uh, to ensure that committees are being run uh, according to the rules. And that is what we are attempting to do here today. Thank you, MP Verson. And it, is, and it is that they may participate, but you do need uh, consent from the members. It is not, it's not unanimous consent. It's just that the members consent that someone is at the table. We've had many members that have participated here at, at uh, the committee that are, that are not standing members of this, uh, of this committee or have not been substituted that have come to, uh, to the table. But the members around the room, including the, uh, the chair, would look and recognize and have the member there at, uh, at the seat. What it does not allow for is for someone to just come barging through the door, sit at the table, and start uh, turning on their mic and saying whatever they want to say. That It does not allow for that. That is my interpretation. And as you know, we would not have the decorum. So what happened, and what happened here, and I'll tell you, MP Pearson, and I want to just go to, back to MP Lawrence. Because of all of that kind of crosstalk and back and forth with MP Genesis, et cetera, I may have missed something that MP, where MP Lawrence was coming in, but that's what happened. So we cannot have, like, as again, the, that type of chaotic, um, you know, antics from from members from to be able to do that it would be uh, uh, it would be disruptive it would not allow committees to do their work this committee i don't think any members from any party would want that here at at this committee we have a lot of work to do here we we you know with the important work we have a uh, budget implementation act we we've got we're hearing debate that is what we are working on mp pearson yes um, may i interact with that Mr. Chair, uh, just the the point being the point being that a member of Parliament does not have to be subbed in in order to move a point of order at a committee. Or is that like were you making the ruling that you have to be subbed in in order to move a point of order? Was that is that your ruling? MP Verson, it's about recognizing a member that is not a member or a senator that is not been is not a, is not sitting at the table is not has not been subbed in to the committee and has not been has not been recognized when we have actually a member that is in in the middle of uh, of debate of speaking here at committee and to be able to to come in and just interrupt and send uh, uh, at the table no they 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 do need they do need some implied consent from the members and there was that was not i did not see that for uh, MP Jenis when he when he came in, and uh, and that is that is what took place. Once he was substituted in, sure, then then the member was uh, was recognized and he was able to uh, he was able to speak. But that that prior to that, that was not the case. I, I still like I still dispute all of that in the, in in the in the fact that the rules clearly state that associate members of which. Every member of parliament is an associate member of every committee. They may not vote, move motions, or be counted for purposes of quorum. But beyond that, they are able to participate. They don't need to be subbed in in order to move a point of order. That, that is the point. And I'm, I, I don't know what page it is because I have it in, but it's in chapter 20. It's like the sixth paragraph down. And I would encourage you to read that again so that you understand that I don't have to be subbed in in order to be recognized at the committee. That that is the point that we are trying to make here, and that that is the your point. I don't know if you're going to challenge. Are you challenging uh, my ruling? I'm not sure how that how that would. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll go back to thank you, MP Pearson. We'll go back to MP uh, Turnbull, please. P.S. Turnbull. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Uh, really great to get back to what I was saying, which I was just talking about the good faith attempt we made. Uh, to work with the Conservatives to come up with an agenda for this committee uh, that, that moved us through May and June in an orderly fashion to accomplish all the things that we had on our agenda, including some of the studies that were before the committee that hadn't been complete, that included, obviously, first order priority, which was the Budget Implementation Act. 
And uh, the conservatives withheld support for that. And fine, I mean, their prerogative to do so. But, uh, you know, for them to come to committee and suggest that I somehow table dropped a motion, the motion that I brought to committee was exactly what we had discussed in our previous meeting. So it wasn't a big surprise. Everybody knew what the priorities were that, that we had uh, identified. And I think the Conservatives knew very quickly that they were in the minority in terms of the, the membership of this committee. And that's why we're in a filibuster today. So the Conservatives put forward uh, an amendment and then a sub-amendment. And the sub-amendment is what we're debating now. It is exactly what the Conservatives are avoiding a vote on. So really what we're doing here is is listening to a five and a half or I guess it's now going on six and a half hours just today of a filibuster from the Conservatives. Uh, and I'm just pointing out what is so for anybody that's paying attention uh, still that has the patience to pay attention to these committee proceedings. And, and I hope that they are. But uh, in reality, uh, the Conservatives know that that the vote isn't going to go their way on the sub-amendment. Therefore, they're holding this committee hostage by continuing to talk ad infinitum and uh, talking, you know, what we heard from MP Chambers earlier was reading a tra transcript from a podcast for over an hour uh, of Mark Carney on the Hurley Burley show. So we, we, uh, we had, you know, him read that into the record which is, you know, certainly uh, not the most creative filibuster I've ever heard by far. But uh, anyway, I guess some conservatives lack imagination. But um, that's okay. I mean, in reality here, all we want to do is get down to business. 